Once this card's summoned, everything's negated for the rest of the turn, period. Lingering. Done. You can't do anything. So the second it gets summoned, the Regeki gets negated. Everything else gets negated for the rest of the turn. And you can't do anything about it. There's a new auto and Yu-Gi-Oh! FTK that you need to know. Not just in TCG, but in Master Duel 2. Because this is coming to Master Duel very, very soon. And it's already in the TCG. No one knows how to do it. You're about to learn right now. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. We're going to get straight into this. This is a combination of a few decks. This combo could be done in basically any deck. I'm going to show you the most consistent way to do it. 99% success rate. It's a literal FTK. It's ridiculous. And no one is even aware of this. I think if people knew this before Nats, it would have dramatically changed how Nats went. So luckily, you guys can know now. Let's get straight into it. Before we do, though, guys, make sure to smash the subscribe button. Make sure to smash the subscribe button. Also, smash the like button and if you guys want to see more videos like this or if you guys want to see more master duel let me know down in the comments and we'll do that also we now you're not able to be a member of the channel so if you guys want to be a member of the channel for very cool perks make sure to join down below and let's get started this is going to be an incredible basically an ftk let's go you guys are about to see greatness this lock is game changing and you could do it in any single deck you play it doesn't matter have you ever heard of kashtira fenrir this card is a staple you could throw this card in any deck you want and you could resolve this combo all your deck needs to have to resolve this combo is to be good have extra monsters you could link away with that you don't care about boom you got the combo one fenrir and one scareclaw gets this whole ftk and you guys are about to witness this greatness right here right now any hand does it and it plays through multiple hand traps i literally normal summon right a uh, rise heart here the game plan is simple you got to get to a rank seven if you can get to a rank seven you have the combo the rank seven is going to send tribulaneous which will send raider's wing they're not like you don't really want to open these two like bricks per se but the deck is built where there's no normal summons in the deck the scare claws of the deck are special summons such as vice star for us and like your 10 ways to that so there's no actual normal summons in the deck we literally normal summon rise heart so if you ever really need to in a pinch you just normal summon the bricks per se and it's a link deck now pay close attention here this is where the, where the lock happens the second you get this rank seven you win the game automatically if it gets hand trapped i don't give a shit the whole uh, idea of this deck is it plays through hand traps and interruptions to then set up the ftk but the ftk happens as you play pay close attention we're gonna do guards and draw if this gets failure we don't care we have full combo all we're doing right now is setting up two monsters in defense so our scarecrow right card will draw two so we discard like look we have double talents we have we don't need any of these cards twins up it doesn't matter but the beauty of this deck is that you still play like 18 defensive cards in it's a 60 card deck before you say oh brick brick this brick that you play 18 defensive cards which is more than any other defensive deck plays anyways you play more than 18 because you play 24 if you count fenrir as a defensive card so i figured this combo out and i'm like why not show it to the masses we're gonna go room right here to get some pluses i want to draw i want to plus a lot because my opponent's not playing on his turn he's literally it's an ftk lock like it's basically scooped uh skipped the turn to my turn we're basically skipping his turn we want to barricade blocker and then we're gonna go arrival don't worry this perlerino's not searching the tier element searching vice star frost and here at this scenario what do we have we have three darks on field three dark materials that is rusty Rusty Bardish has been forgotten. I don't know why people stop going into this card. This card's absolutely crazy. Now, you guys see where this is going. I have a rank seven with zero material. Why on God's green earth are people not playing this? Now, again, you don't normal summon. So all you do, the three bricks in this deck to make sure this, well, you play five cards that are not in the combo. That's boots, which is the biggest enabler in this entire deck. Now it means that any scare claw gets into Rusty, which is double fog blade. Like, we're talking about any given scenario. I want you guys to think about every meta, every deck in the meta. Two fog blades stop them. If you're going second against Rika, like you could literally just play around their board against Rika. Resolve Rusty, set double fog blade, you win the game. With not not no follow-up, nothing. Double fog blade not just stops Imperm, but going second and stops them from attacking. It stops a lot of decks, it destroys Kishtira, destroys so many decks. So it's nice to have in a CC card deck. And because you play cards like Itali you, uh, and uh, you still play Punks in this, you have a lot of good discard outlets as well. Let's get to the actual FTK though and how we actually end up winning. So what we're going to do is we're going to send Boots to add Rank Up Magic Launch. This is the enabler that puts Scareclaw and Kushtira together. It's Rusty. And the fact that any Rank 7 that you make... Now we also play Right of Hermes here. So Griffin's level 7. Scareclaws get access to level 7 via Scareclaw Kushtira. You just need to get a rank seven and you can play star usually if you like you can also play ancient fairy dragon because of foxy tune itali and Xamine to make the scare claw level four level seven ancient fairy and ancient fairy gets you anywhere because ancient fairy gets to the field spell to get the other level seven that's how you get them on this lock the beauty of this lock is anytime that you don't actually have the lock lock you'll dug a double fog blade twin saw now my opponent's gonna draw he knows exactly what's coming 
it's gonna for those that don't know what's coming it's kali yuga kali yuga is unbelievable kali yuga does it says when this card is summoned all effects are negated for the rest of the turn it doesn't even activate what that means so my opponent is going to have an opportunity to play a card on drop phase or standby what's he going to do activate thrust i didn't activate a card activate regeki doesn't matter if he goes to main phase i go what i'm just going to use regeki if he activates regeki in main phase i instantly just chain rank up magic launch on my arsenal falcon kaliuga effect does not trick it does not activate what it says is once this card summon everything's negated for the rest of the turn period lingering done you can't do anything so the second it gets summoned R Regeki gets negated everything else gets negated for the rest of the turn and you can't do anything about it the only answer to a card like that is sphere mode on this and no one's playing that you got to think of what everyone else is playing they're playing Regeki they're playing thrust they're playing talents they're playing imperm they're playing you know shit like that and this deck eats through hand traps for breakfast and there's just nothing my opponent could do whatsoever like there's seriously nothing Except the drove he drew for turn. Thank God you didn't have that. But guess what? No one's meaning that anyways. Game two, I draw every defensive card known to mankind. Did I mention we play 18? We side into like 25. Sadly, we drew all of it. And we do have like 35 starters in the deck. Uh, we only drew one with nothing else. We're actually going to end up losing this game because of a misplay. I don't want to see the misplay because I'm disgusted at my own misplay. Here, let's do it again. Guess what? What happens here? We kind of break a bit. So how could you see this FTK in action now when my opponent sided for it? He has hand traps to play against it. We kind of bricked. We drew four warriors, which is like Rhoda's only target is really room heart. Uh, so let's see how we can get this. We go primitive rec phobia. Rec phobia is not going to get vice star for us. We're playing through all the interruptions. If my opponent hand traps me anytime, we're good. And we're playing safely, knowing that my opponent is going to get cooked. I go Baron if I want to, but I'm like, let's wait a little bit. I use room heart here to add imaginings. I want to draw. I want to draw, 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 draw. Because in order to FTK, I do need a level. I do need a level seven. The other level seven, I can't really FTK him. So let me just keep drawing. I go, go into Baron right away, because uh, Baron will be able to stop anything he has. I go into Vicious Astro Loud. I go into Rota first. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to Baron, pop my Regphobia. The reason behind that, I know I'm going to Barricade Blocker. So Barricade Blocker, I could add the Regphobia back for follow-up. I already have one, but might as well. If you guys notice with this hand, this is what I love about FTKs. Now, if you guys remember the, the Pendulum FTK, the greatest FTK of all time, where you'll actually like literally burn them for 9,000 or whatever, they had a very cool thing where if you bricked or if you got hand trapped oblivion you could maneuver and just end on a pendulum negate board that's a great thing about all locks where it's not like be all end all let me call you go or i lose the game so what i notice here look my rusty got ashed i opened zero level sevens or ways to get into level sevens who gives a shit i'm gonna end on baron and fog blades and that's gonna be plenty that's all i need baron and fog blades is gonna be enough for game now i'm gonna search i'm gonna double search with cloak and uh boots raider's wing is always treated as a phantom knight's card so i could also add it so i'm gonna end on double on triple fog blade and baron and triple fog blade baron he's playing a cybers triple fog blade baron versus a five card cybers hand should be enough and i get a follow-up i have great follow-up this is and when well, my baron did have to get used so i just used that to get right card for to get twin saw I uh, negated my bear with Baron because uh, I knew I have the right card to get follow up. I have five cards in hand. All I care for in this deck is follow up. And this, I'm going to fast forward the rest of this. It's going to go and show that even when you don't pull off the FTK that we did on turn one, it's going to pull off a multiple interruption board as a backup. So even though you have an FTK in the deck, Kali Yuga is an FTK. I don't, you can put it any way you, you want it. It's basically it's searching Harpy's Featherstorm every single turn. It's Harpy's Featherstorm in the deck. Like, like. It's not, let me just hard draw Harpy's Featherstorm. This is Harpy's Featherstorm on crack, on steroids, bro, that you can get access to any single time you want. I, my point out of the perfect cards to Fog Blade. I literally just wait till I see the access code. That's the only thing I care about to Fog Blade. So I get rid of the other two. I don't care. This is going to be quite a nice grind game, though. So it's going to be fun to watch. I have six cards in hand. So obviously, six cards in hand. This is going to be plenty to stop my opponent. My opponent goes for this right away. I'm like, that's okay. I kind of baited him to do it fast. I'm, I'm putting him on uh, better have. The card there, uh, summon vicious astral loud, force the negate, pop pop. I could have, I should have set up my scarecrow twin saw. That was a little mistake that I did, but I should have set it up on his turn in case he drew a card. Uh, and I didn't. He had Ash there. I'm gonna put him now and draw on uh, one card follow up situation. Uh, he, he's one turn left, and on his turn he's gonna draw and scoop. So that's one game we're gonna show you. One more replay here of the best deck in action one more match to show you guys i fast forward all the way to game three because who the heck is trying to watch flunder 
But we're in game three. Don't worry, I'm going first. So you can see what happens. I want to show you this because how do we play around hand traps? You guys have witnessed now how to do the combo uh, well, on the first duel I showed. How to play when you when you totally brick and uh, can't, don't have access to the rank seven, don't have access to the FTK. You're still ending on four interruptions. Now I'm going to show you how to play through Shifter and Nibiru. This is two of the strongest hand traps in Yu-Gi-Oh. How could you handle both in a deck that needs the graveyard a lot? So what, we're, what are we going to do? We see the Shifter. Instantly when I see this hand, by the way, well, the hand I currently have is easily. It's through double hand trap. I have the full lock plus negates. Plus Baron, plus Fog Blades, plus Negates, all that. But sadly, through Shifter, you can't use Rusty to send Boots to search the FTK card, Kaliuga. So instantly, I'm like, Shifter, all right, you can no longer Kaliuga them. But let's see what we could do, though, through the Shifter. So I go Unicorn here to get Kashtiosis. I get rid of him here in Fateful. Now, I know what I'm playing. I'm playing against Flunder. Flunder cannot OTK. So it's a very cool trick here. If you play Shifter and you know, if you get Shifter, you know you're playing Kashtira, you're going to need to put up some interruptions. But if you know you're playing against Flunder, you think wisely on the interruptions you want to put up uh, because your only game plan is to win on the following turn. Here, I'm going to I'm gonna put that over there. I'm going to Vice of Star Frost away the Unicorn. I'm going to Lightheart. Lightheart's going to give me Reg Phobia. I want to get some searches and pluses. That's all I care about. I'm literally setting up a Dugaris right now. I could have set up a Baron if I wanted, Baron, Grip, and all that. I don't care. I'm going to get hit with Dark Ruler probably. I'm going to hit with Lightning Storms. Regekis and Dark Ruler is up the A-hole. Easily. I know he's playing Flunder. That's the style of cards Flunder plays. So I'm thinking in my mind, dude, I just want to add 10 cards in my hand. And I'm going to auto-win the game like that. So what I'm going to do after that is, in this scenario, I'm just asking if I could shift her. Or sorry, uh, shift doesn't feel if I could still Rusty. So what I'm going to do in this scenario is, I'm going to cash Diosis. Uh, cash Diosis to special Fenrir. And then in that scenario, I'm going to Fenrir. I'm going to add uh, Circle Kashtira. And then, because Kirstiosis locks you uh, specifically into XYZs, I go Dugarius after just to set up my next turn. I'm under D Shifter. So, all I'm trying to do is set up my hand with the perfect possible hand. And I just kill him next turn. Whatever he does, I have a big board here. I have Griffin, I have Fenrir. Uh, I was able, if I really wanted to, to search Twinsaw. But I'm like, I don't care. I just want to get all the follow up, and the next turn I kill him. He Nibiru's me in the main phase. Correction. Twinsaw was not in this version of the deck. Correction. It was in the later version of the deck. Once I realized I need a, uh, some, an interruption, another interruption for Shifter. So if I put that in the deck, it would have been three interruptions. Or four. So now he, he Nibiru's. So I'm forced to Griffin. But guess what? I have six cards in hand. I don't care. I have a full field. What on God? Like, even if he outs this board, well, he will out it. He will out it. Once he outs this board, I crack his board with my six cards. Easily. He goes into terraforming. I'm like, dude, do your thing. I don't care. You could put up anything you want. You could put up the great. Like, yeah, I know you. You don't got Featherstorm going second, so that's the only card that's a concern, really. And because he doesn't have that, because he's going second, I win the game automatically. So I just set up a basically a, a, a bunch of bodies that he's forced to deal with. I save my Fenrir uh, to get rid of the M Pen because the M Pen is just a monster, a body on board. I'm just trying to get rid of. He is literally is not capable. His deck is not capable of outing all, all my board. Gets rid of my Fateful Adventure. Don't care. Uh, this is easy. There's nothing you can do. Uh, Banish to the Shifter. He's going to M Pen get rid of that. He sets his trap card. My turn. It's over. I don't draw because of Dugar, so I don't care. I set Souls. I pop that. I draw with. The, I'm just activating cards now, basically baiting him to use his trap card. Uh, I normal summon Rumar on purpose to trigger my talents. All my talents to be live. Uh, so I purposely summon that. Let him summon the Ryza. I let him summon his whole board. I'm li I literally don't care what he summons. Because I have six cards in hand. This is going to be the easiest OTK of all time. Uh, instantly, I'm going to go into Selene. I'm trying to force this trap. He's kind of forced to use it. Because Selene is going to go into straight into Axis Code Talker. So right away on that, he's going to use that to set my souls. Uh, and he, he still has another right. He has Empen. He has Ryza. He knows Axis Code can't be used. That's where he's going to get cooked. I saved my talents this whole time, uh, knowing that an M-Pen is going to be dropped shortly with that last trap card. He summons a Ryza as well. I'm like, I don't care. Go, go ahead, bro. Anyways, Obsidian, pop my set, uh, get Calarium, and this is going to be game and a half. Talents take, flip Dugaris, use Vice of Starfrost, Scareclaw Arrival, Scareclaw, that Dark. Oh, Selene, Axis Code, that's game. GG! And this is the deck list. You're playing triple Fenrir, double Unicorn, 
one scare cash kashir rise star triple vices triple right card triple enchantress now you're going to notice there's no uh a manadium engine in this i removed the manadium engine for a pun the punk engine and a little because i felt the punk engine helped a little bit more as far as cards that they needed to interrupt no matter what and it's nice to have foxy to get rid of potential bricks per se and like the, i don't i really don't mind opening boots or fog blade it's where you're doing a tribute ladies that don't really help you fog blade ends up just being like a chalice a lot of people are playing cards like cosmic cyclone in the deck uh in their decks or generic one of interruptions uh like forbidden lance whatever fog blade it serves as the same thing it's a defensive card if you draw it it's a it's a something that stops it from attacking uh and stops uh, effect negation boots is the best card to have because it gets it's like a car it's a body plus the fog blade so i don't really mind but these two are are quite the issue and if you hard draw rank a magic launch uh, you, you got you just don't need to rusty you just keep it and your ftk becomes easier to do same with boots uh so i, was, I do like the punk engine to get rid of extra cards and that's the rest of this i'm not going to explain much because it's just broken these nine in my opinion are the best nine defensive cards to play going second way better than thrust main deck econ is absurd it's actually bananas how good an enemy controller is in both tcg and master duel the side deck is the trip special every board breaker known to mankind i side in a cloak and a third fog blade because i want to see these cards going first going first you want to see all the uh phantom knight cards they're incredible i also get sided in against any single deck with fenrir uh it's tough to fit into this deck everything in the extra deck is actually pretty vital i put a big scareclaw engine to have a strong grind game uh, and Donner is nice to free up the zone for Fenrir. At times it does come up. And that's the deck. Uh, the deck's absolutely fucking beautiful. I, I love it. And it doesn't lose unless you misplay, which obviously I never do. And neither do you! Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, you'll never misplay if you get a Triple Gaming play on So make sure to go do so. Make sure to smash the subscribe button. Make sure to smash the like button. And I'll see you guys next video. Peace!